Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining me for another book chat. You know, one of my favorite actresses of American film noir from the 1940s is Veronica Lake. And she appeared in a movie in 1942 where her opening scene is she's dressed to the nines. She walks into this crowded room. She walks up to this guy. She slaps him across the face and she says, get out of my way, you cheap crook. And then she pushes her way past him. <laughs> it's a great scene, you know, and it's a, it's a great entrance for her. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't appear in the book, though. The book is The Glass Key by Dashiell Hammett. And that film version starred Veronica Lake and Alan Ladd. And I will chat a bit more about the film later on in this chat. But for now, let's focus on the book, originally published back in 1931. And I read a 1972 well-read and really battered um, vintage books edition paperback. So, yeah, The Glass Key by Dashiell Hammett. So, you know, I read a couple of other books by Dashiell Hammett last year. I read The Maltese Falcon as well as Red Harvest, and um, I chatted both of those. So I will link to those chats down in the description if you're interested to hear about those as well. So this is hardball detective fiction from the mid-20th century American hardball detective fiction, and such fun to read. What it's about, um, our main character's name is Ned Beaumont. He's kind of a gambler, and mainly, though, he's a fixer for a political boss named Paul Madvig, who is who runs sort of this smallish town. It's politics. And this being hardball detective fiction, we don't have to think very far to realize that there's a lot of corruption in this smallish town. Well, Paul Madvig, the political boss, has a daughter or sister, Opal, a younger sister, Opal, and she's been sort of um, messing around, I guess, with the wrong sort of guy. He is a wealthy guy. He is the son of the center, his, senator. His name is Taylor Henry. And Paul has forbidden Opal to see Taylor anymore because he's really a womanizer and, you know, all around not that nice of a guy, we find out. But this, of course, doesn't sit well with her. Well, early on in the novel, Ned, our main character, has been doing some gambling and he's really kind of down on his luck. He hasn't won anything. He ends up winning, he bets, makes a bet on a horse and ends up winning kind of big, right? He makes a, a bet with a bookie whose name is Bernie. And he makes this bet with Bernie and he's gonna, he's due $3,500 when the horse actually does come in. Well, in the meantime, Bernie skips town. Uh, he actually takes all of his girlfriend, whose name is Lee, takes all of her jewelry, everything that she owns, basically except what she was wearing. She was passed out at the time, asleep, um, and skips town. Well, Ned Beaumont, Ned, the main character, is just really going to have none of this. So he, his first mission is to actually go in search of Bernie and get his money. He wants his money. But then some other thing happens. <laughs> Taylor Henry, the young man, the son of the senator, is found dead by Ned in the street. So, um, don't know what happened there, but, you know, we, we realize we're going to also have this murder mystery going on. So the senator is a very powerful senator who's up for re-election, and his daughter's name is Janet. This is the character played by Veronica Lake in the film that I talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, so Janet Henry, her dad, the Senator Henry, and then her brother, who has been, who's now dead, Taylor Henry. So we had these two kind of like stories, lines going on. It's kind of really early in the book where Ned is in search of his money, number one, and um, also this Taylor is is killed. So then another one of the main characters name is um, Shad Arori and he is a competitor, uh, sort of a competing sort of gangster boss kind of person to Paul. So um, there's that there's that sort of rivalry for struggle for power behind the scenes. You know, this is a smallish kind of town. And so this is one of the things about this particular hardball detective fiction, I think, is that the morality of this town, like the town, it seems like 
really is most, main, mainly concerned with appearances. So as long as things appear to be moral or appear to be okay, that's really all they're shooting for, you know? So all these characters are sort of intertwining with each other really for a power grab. Well, Paul, the the political boss, has sort of set his sights on, on Janet, and this plays out differently in the book than it did in the film, which I'll talk about, as I said, more later. But he um, is expecting for in return for part of in return for his support of the senator and backing the senator and getting him reelected using this corrupt political machine that he has that he will also, you know, ultimately get Janet as well. Well, a relationship begins to form then between Ned and Janet, which complicates matters as well. I'm not going to give away a lot of spoilers. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of things that go on, obviously, um, but I'm not going to, I don't want to detract any, if anybody wanted to read the, the novel, I wouldn't want to detract for that. So I won't give away anything that I think would detract from the experience of reading the book. should have said that at the beginning of the chat. But um, yeah, so that's sort of what is going on um, in the novel, you know, a couple of things that I thought about, the difference with this novel, the atmosphere of it, and, and, the, and the film. So the film is definitely a film noir, while this is, the book itself is definitely hard detective fiction. And, you know, a lot of times I think these, in my mind as well, I've confused these two genres, these two ideas, because they intermix a lot of times. In the mid-20th century, a lot of some hardball detective fiction was made into film noir. It does lend itself to film noir, but they really are two different things. And so in this book, you know, we have a, um, a level of corruption in the town that really is pervading the whole town and pervading pretty much all of the characters. I was trying to think, you know, sometimes in, in hardball detective fiction, there will be one character who's really a good person. I was trying to think in this novel, if there was one sing one person who really was a good person and, you know, maybe Paul's mother might be a good person. I'm not sure. Uh, but everyone else, I'm, and I, I kind of think she's not, because I kind of think she's aware of what Paul does. She's choosing ignorance so that she can, you know, stay out of it. But I think she actually knows what all he's up to. So I don't know. I don't know if there's a single good person in 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the novel. I mean, truly good. I mean, they're not all evil either. Um, they're they're a mixed bag, like like most people, right? In the film, though, um, you know, the, it's more atmospheric. So this is more concerned with the corruption. The um, film with Veronica Lake and Alan Ladd is mo is more concerned with the atmosphere that gets created around this. So they change up some key things. For one, the senator in... Um, I think the senator belongs to a reform party in the film, and that's not the case necessarily in the in the book. Um, and the film also focuses more on the relationship between um, the two main Ned and Janet, or you know Alan, the Alan Ladd character and the Veronica Lake character in the book. It's not it they they do develop a relationship, but it's really the the relationship is much more ambiguous in the book than it was in the film because ambiguity is sort of a hallmark of this era of horrible detective fiction. I've learned, or at least that's my, been my takeaway from the few of them that I've read. So. Yeah, that's that's a really a big difference I think between the film and the book. The the book is definitely a hardball detective uh, work of hardball detective fiction, and the film is definitely a film noir. And there's a you know there's a there's a difference. Um, yeah. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about I think was um, well one was about this girlfriend Lee, um, the the girlfriend of the bookie. Um, her name is Lee, and she's just a great character. She doesn't appear that often in the book, but when she does, she's really a scene stealer. So I just thought I would read just to, so you get an idea of some of the dialogue of of this from this from from Dashiell Hammett, which is what he's known for. Um, this is when she's realized she's woken up and she's realized that the her boyfriend Bernie has skipped town with all of her jewelry except what she had on. And she says, um, 
she's talking to Ned. Ned comes to her apartment. She's talking to Ned. So she says, the girl came close to him, grasped his arms above the elbows, and tried to shake him. You know what I did for that bum? She demanded. I left the best home any girl ever had and a father and mother that thought I was the original Miss Jesus. <laughs> they told me he was no good. Everybody told me that, and they were right, and I was too dumb to know it. Well, I hope to tell you, I know it now, the blah, blah, blah. The rest was shrill obscenity. So yeah, her father and mother thought she was the original Miss Jesus, um, but she ran away with him anyway. She, you know what? She didn't learn her lesson. She goes back to him several times. She has bad luck with men. She declares later on in the novel that you know she can't seem to have luck with men. Ned Beaumont then explains to her, well, maybe it's the men that you pick. But luck is a recurring theme throughout the book. And Ned, actually, I wanted to read a chapter from Ned, or, or section of the, from the book about Ned, which explains his motivation for why he's going after this money. Paul tries to convince him not to go and not to worry about it, but he explains why he needs to go, and it's all about luck. He says, um, that doesn't count now. This does. I've got to get this guy. I've got to. His face was pale, set hard, and his voice was desperately earnest. Listen, Paul, it's not only the money, though 3200 is a lot, but it would be the same if it was five bucks. I go two months without winning a bet, and that gets me down. What good am I if my luck's gone? Then I cop. I think I do, and I'm all right again. I can take my tail out from between my legs and feel that I'm a person again and not just something that's being kicked around. The money's important enough, but it's not the real thing. It's what losing and losing and losing does to me. Can you get that? It's getting me licked. And then, when I think I've worn out this jinx, this guy takes a Mickey fan on me. I can't stand for it. If I stand for it, I'm, I'm licked. My nerve's gone. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going after him. So, yeah, luck, you know, this was Depression era, so luck um, is a recurring theme, but I think that that really, um, that really sort of explains his motivation. It's like, it's not necessarily the money, it's just like, he needs better luck, he needs his luck to change. And Lee, the girl, you know, she wants her luck to change with men, too. They don't seem to see that, you know, part of their luck is, bad luck is being... Brought, brought about by the choices they're making, um, I don't know that they come to that realization uh, really ever <laughs> in the novel. So the glass key also has a really interesting explanation, but I've decided I won't share the, the this. It pertains to a dream that Janet Henry has uh, pertaining to a glass key. And sort of like, once things escape a lock, they can't be put back, right? Once things are out, they can't you can never go backwards. So, yeah, so I enjoyed that very much. I think I will leave the chat with that. I do plan on reading some more hardball detective fiction in the future, and I may try some. I'm still reading through some Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler, but I do hope to eventually get to some more current, maybe, uh, hardball detective fiction and see what that's all about, because I don't think I've ever read any current um, hardball detective fiction. So, more to come. Um, my next chat. So my next chat is going to be Art as Therapy by Elaine de Baton and John Armstrong. I have finished this already. Absolutely loved it. I'll have a chat coming up on this in the very near future. So until then, take care. Bye.